Welcome into today's broadcast right here at Cog Hill Farm. Now, Peaches wouldn't let Nugget into the house for this episode, so here's Jason, Brooke, and our chicken master, Mary Carl. What is up, guys? This is another episode of the Cogcast Podcast. I think this is episode number 17. I think you said that last time. No, I said 16 last oh, time. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember. I remember. <laughs> I'm glad a, you do. Got a brain like an elephant. Uh, great white elephant. <laughs> <laughs> That's what your daddy used to say. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, I do remember that. It's funny. Oh, me, that's funny. Oh, man, we are, our schedule is still a little off. This is the, we, we, we said we were back to yeah. a normal schedule, but we told a tale. We're, we're, we're off. Um, one, this is going to be a, like a Q&A segment, and that should have been on Monday, but it's all messed up. But we're, 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 we're here. We got Mary Carl back with us. We got us. Mary Carl back with us. She's no longer coughing. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so we're we're we're, we're all back. And we're all well, and we're all all well. We're all looking forward to the time change. Amen to that. Mary Carl, did you know that was this weekend? I think so. No, it, it, didn't, it doesn't affect her in any kind of way. Well, well, it means that she has more time with her daddy. That's true. When she when you get home, so it does affect her. That is true. I didn't think about that, but you're right about that. It's almost like as soon as Jason gets home from work, I have dinner ready. As soon as he walks in the door every day. So we're like early eaters, I guess you would say. Yep, we eat you do dinner have... at 530 That's every right. day. Yep. And by that time, it's dark outside. Yep. And yeah. especially in the like winter, it's really it is. dark. It's, this is rough. I don't know why that's... I mean, I'm sure there's a reason, and I'm sure there's people out there that probably love it. But um, I, I don't understand it now. I'm not one I really of those. I, did, I, just I don't mean, if you got up really, really early, it might be okay, but... Well, it's not even that. You know, actually, in the wintertime, it's dark when you get up and it's yeah. dark when you, when, you, when you get home. So, it is what it is. I'm um, starting a petition right now. Yeah. I know they talked about it one time. <laughs> they did talk about it. Make daylight savings mm-hmm. time year-round, but I'm starting a COG petition. And there's a couple of states that that, that, that is... Oh, it's it's That's gotta be awesome. Yeah. Y'all tell us how awesome We'd it is. We'd like to know. Make us dream about Alabama <laughs> becoming one of those states. That's right. Um and plus we are a day behind because we're um we had some of our good friends. We did. We um we 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 befriend people because of YouTube and you start talking to people that have the same interest you got and all that kind of good thing and um chad and case at adler farm i've been friends with them for a while now and they 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 went on a a father-son trip and they stopped by tartar manufacturing that makes like the waters and yeah i think they said that that's where my chick trough came from i keep that's right and and i think they said that was in kentucky if i'm correct yeah that's correct and then they left there and went and saw Travis and Greg at Hoss Tools I'm in not Georgia. Gonna lie, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> We've been talking about, you know, where we'd like to go on yep. vacation and stuff like that. And you know what my number one request is? To go see Hoss Tools. Yes. Do you want to do that, Mary Carl? I think it would be very interesting. I, I do think, too. I think so too. And we we've we've had several plans, but then the pandemic hit. And yeah, it's we're gonna make it a, happen. We're gonna make it happen. And then he left there and went to the beach in Florida in the Panhandle. Uh huh. And then left there and on their way back to Missouri, stopped by here and we just had a good old time here. I'm wearing their shirt. And I got their hat on. Just because <laughs> when you like somebody, that's what you do. That's you, right. You give them a shout out. And I'm going to tell y'all, I did not know Chad or Case before they came to visit. I knew what Jason told me. He was kind of like a buddy of Jason's. And I just, you know, I heard from Jason what they had going on, such as that. But y'all, those guys are awesome. They are awesome. They are fantastic. Mary Carl and Case are just about the same age. And it was so nice to have somebody that shared the same interest as Mm -hmm. her. It really did. That you felt comfortable with your child being friends with. Mm -hmm. And I think that they will be friends for a long time. I think so, too. Um, he, he's just a good kid. His dad's done a fantastic job and just kudos to him for, you know, keeping it real and absolutely raising that boy up. Right. Absolutely. Good content. Um, if, if you're not following Adler farm, be sure to go over there to their channel and, and, um, tell them that 
the Cog Squad sent y'all over there because they are good guys. A D L E R. A D L E R Farm. Says it right there. It does, but I don't know if. And right there. Yeah, it does. So shout out to y'all. That's why we didn't get the podcast out last night. That's right. We got to talking and we didn't shut up. And before we knew it, it was almost, you know, like the next day and stuff. And. Um, oh, but we enjoyed our visit. We so. did enjoy it. Absolutely. Mary Carl, what you got going on? <coughs> um, I had three silkies hatched today. <laughs> Do what? Three silkies hatched today. That's kind of an everyday thing, though. Yeah. Right now. I've, my silkies have actually started laying a whole lot more since it got warmer. It's been around 65 the past few days, yes. 70. It's, it's been warm. <clears throat> As a matter of fact, I think the high today was 78. Yeah, it got really yeah. warm, warm enough for shorts. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was going to say, I've noticed her with pants on in the morning, and then she comes in about lunchtime, and she's changing those <laughs> pants for shorts. And, <laughs> you know, kids don't put their clothes where they belong most of the time. And That's right. So I am ended up with multiple articles of clothing around the house <laughs> because their weather is just... It's Flip-flop. crazy. That's okay. And I'll take these night, warmer temperatures. I agree. Well, when it gets darker, it gets way cooler. It does. When yeah. you go out, like, you know, when it, after it gets dark, you about need a jacket. Well, it's been in the mid-30s at night and then yeah. almost close to 80 in the afternoon. So it's, a it's, it's, a, it's a big swing right now. I think on Saturday it's supposed to get to 85. I Is think it really? you're right. I think you're right, too. Woo. You got a play date plan for Saturday, don't you? Yes. She's going to her friend Piper's house for the day. And oh, right. And I Piper's got a paddle boat. A, a pedal boat, oh. I think is what it's called. Is it called a pedal boat? It has pedals. It's like, it's like pedaling a bike. <laughs> and, and it's a boat. And mm-hmm. they have a big pond. Mm-hmm. So I have a feeling those girls are going to have a blast. Ooh, I bet some going to be some sore legs come Sunday morning. <laughs> and Mary, Mary Carl has um, gave Piper a few ducks. And Piper has a few ducks of her own. And. I bet they'll be paddling right along with you. Oh, I bet they will be too. The ducks that I had so many of, that's where two of those went to a very nice home. Yes. We might have to give you the GoPro and you take it with you and show some footage. Yeah, we could. (laughs) We'll give you the cube in case. Oh, yeah, the little tiny Mm -hmm. one. You can just duct tape it to your boat. That's right. That'll work. (laughs) (laughs) Or duct tape it to your head, whatever you prefer. (laughs) That's funny. So, so, um,. Anything else going on the farm with planted taters? Um, speaking of planting taters, um, I had you, I had a lot of feedback on my potato planting. Um, I had several people tell me that their grandparents cut their potatoes up and planted them the same day. Um, you know, I've always been taught that they're open in, they're real susceptible. So I can't say that word. I'm not even gonna try it. You got it close. I enough. got close. Y'all know what I'm talking I about. I knew what you meant. <laughs> Yeah, I did too. <laughs> to disease and rot because it's an open, it's a, you know, it's just an open potato. Um, so, but they said their grandparents did it. I've never done it that way. I've always been told that they had to heal up, and um, usually takes three to five days for that to happen. And we were already up against the clock, and we planted the whole potatoes. But that was one thing that several several people mentioned in the comments that their grandparents would cut them up and plant them the same day. I was going to say we could try an experiment and cut an eye off, but yeah. oh, we don't no, have any left. Could, so. but <laughs> we could get some in a bag that was from the store that we're already sprouting. <laughs> Good idea, Mary Carl. I would like to know if you know what our experience would be. Right. Yeah. That's okay. That would be interesting. There's yeah. always next year, right? Always next year. We'll have. We hope. We'll have potatoes next year too. We hope. We hope. So what else? Um. I'm trying to think anything else going on. That may be it. I'm sure we're forgetting stuff. Like I said, we're not we're not on back to our normal schedule and on track yet, but we will be this week. Oh, I was up. so yeah. just, I mean, I just knew we were going to be back on schedule, but to have Adler come and visit was more important than us keeping our schedule. So that yeah. and plus we're still recovering recovering and we're a little behind and we, you know, but it's all good. We're good. Well, y'all are feeling good now, right? Yeah, we're feeling good. Yes. Well, that's that's the important yeah. part is you're recovered and it was not COVID. Um, yeah, it was not COVID. We <coughs> all negative. All negative, and lo and behold, we hope that is behind us and yes, don't want that mess again. No, don't want that mess again. <coughs> and so thankful I didn't have it, so I could take care. Well, I mean, I was sick for that one day, but so I could take care of y'all anyway. We're thankful <laughs> of that as well. Trust me. Everybody needs to be able to <laughs> be served while they're sick, right? That's right. 
All right. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else. I, I can't. I, we would tell you guys we do this off the whim. I mean, this yeah, is there's not planned, planned out. out at all. So, um, we but forget. I think that's what makes it great that well, it's not scripted, that it's not planned out, that it's just us, us being us, and, and I think people enjoy that. Well, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Um, we are going to do a Q and A tonight since we're kind of behind and. We really didn't have any videos to go over because we were one behind on the video. Like I said, our schedule's kind of messed up. So hey, we're gonna be back. We're gonna be back. Um, so we're gonna do some Q and A. Let me, Carl, pick one. Um, well, let's uh, just go in order. That way, that we won't get all messed up. Oh. But, but let's see here. Well, I can't see that far. So, um, <laughs> well, this one is for mom. Okay. Because you got your big O. Uh, I got my big O. My and big O. What's funny is is somebody I wrote this down. Somebody said. That they don't think we ought to call it Big O because we already got Big O and Little O. Well, talking about our peacocks, Ozilla. But that's why we called it that. I thought it was kind of comical that we would have a Big O and a Little O peacock and a Big, big O and a Little O, o tractor. tractor. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Somebody said you ought to call it the Huge O. Well, Big O, Big O O. How about <laughs> oh, yeah. that? Big the, O O. Big O O. Yeah, they said that maybe calling it the Huge O, which I what thought about was funny. O O. O O. Well, it's not old O, it's new O. New O. It's new O to me. It is new O. Yeah. To me. I mean, it's not brand new, but it's, it's not new brand to me. new. Mary it Carl looks said, brand new, though. Mary Carl said when I said Big O, she said, well, now we're going to have to start calling the peacocks by their real names. Yeah, Ozella. Ozella. And and little, Edna. Is it Edna? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, we we named her Edna because that was Scott's dear Wait, friend. Let's that get did. into that. There's, I don't think people know the whole story about Scott. Well, if Scott we do, we're not going to be able to answer questions. We'll say that for another podcast? I think so. Okay. All right, so getting back to Big O, the tractor, mm -hmm. are you going to have a place to store your lovely new tractor? That has been asked a lot. Is it they're asking because I couldn't fit it under the... I think they're worried about what happened to the little O tractor. Oh. And this one's so beautiful that they don't want anything to happen to your beautiful tractor, and they won't know if you're going to keep it in storage. Well, Jason came home the other day, and I had Big O parked up under the carport <laughs> where the cars go. That's right. So, for now, that's what's happening is we're parking it under the carport that's right. we're because it is plenty here. tall enough. Yes. Yeah. Um, although, that leaves the car out in the weather. We have a three-car carport, and, of course, my mom lives next door to us. She has a car, so that leaves two spots. Yep. And then we have the side-by-side, -side, which we try to keep under cover just because it's we open. Do. Right. And Mary Carl has a little side-by-side, -side, so that takes up another parking spot. Right. So, my tractor's in another parking spot. So, I don't know. It's fine like it is, though. I think it's fine under the carport. And plus, I'm yeah. going to put a coat of, uh, I've read about ceramic wax. Ceramic wax is the new stuff that's Y'all tell be... me. Tell me what I should do. I haven't purchased anything to wax it with yet. Yeah. Um, I've looked at different kinds of sprays and different mm -hmm. things. But y'all tell me, if you've got a solution on how to keep my paint looking brand new, how to keep water rolling off of it, Heaven forbid it get in the rain. Right. But um, shoot shoot us a message or leave it in the comments. email or comment yeah. or whatever and let me know because um, that wax is kind of expensive. Yep. And then it's going to take me a lot of time to get it covered. So I want to do the best solution I can come up with. Yes. But for now, she's covered under the carport. So that answers that. Covered under the carport. Uh, how do we or how do you preserve your garlic? Is that for me? To go with it. You're okay. the garlic queen. Well, if you shop at Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or any grocery stores, offer paper sacks from like the grocery store. Mm -hmm. Like the old time, they used to use paper bags that's right. instead of plastic. Now, and that's the only stores I can think of now that still, you know, use them on a regular basis. I but think you're right. I, t I save those bags and we put our garlic in it and we roll that bag up and I put it in the back of my pantry. And I usually put it on the bottom shelf in the back. And usually when I go to grab a clove, I just reach my hand in there, not knowing what I'm looking at and grab my clove and put, put it back. And it'll last a couple of years in there. Oh, it, I've never had anything to rot. Never had any to rot. Never had it to sprout. Now, and... I've, I've had this problem. I use it all up. <laughs> <laughs> that happens every year. I go to get that bag and I'm feeling and I'm feeling and I'm feeling and I'm feeling nothing. And I don't like that. Yeah. But, but guess what? That's about to change. That's about to change. So maybe the garlic, the garlic looks fairly good. It does. It hopefully does. the bulbs are big. We won't know, but hopefully, 
Hope we're okay. I'm thinking that when we do harvest that garlic and once we let it dry for a little bit, yeah. maybe we can video us putting it in our yeah, brown so. bags. Well, and, we'll, we'll document all yeah. that. Yeah, because it does save it. I mean, yeah, I've never had a problem with rot. Yeah, we never had a problem. And it is a cool, dry place. Cool, dry place in the back of the pantry. And a paper bag, not a plastic bag. Not a bag. plastic bag. Because that so, plastic bag may cause condensation yeah, maybe. Or something, uh, so I don't I, know. I've never had a problem. So, I mean, that's my suggestion as to how to store your garlic. Mary Carl, do the mallards stay here or do they leave forever? They leave in breeding season to go sit and lay on eggs. And that's everywhere. But, that's <laughs> but not, they don't but leave like a, our farm. No, they, they have probably never left. So the mallards are here all the time. Yeah, they're unless they're out sitting on eggs. <laughs> yeah, but they're they're on our property somewhere. They're just hidden somewhere. Yeah, so they like, don't migrate away. If y'all nope. saw in the video when we were feeding the goats, hey, the male goats, we've got a mallard that's nesting. That's right down at the bottom of that hay feeder, and she's almost camouflaged. You can't see her. She yes, is. unless you're looking for. Her. So therefore, if they're in the woods. You're not going to see that bird. No, and they're like it. the exact same color as leaves. Yes, they are. They are. And I guess that's why they're brown and black. We You're saw probably right. During that cold spell right before it, Mary Carl and I were over in her area where she keeps a dog kennel and some chickens that she was going to sell. And here comes a mallard with two babies behind her. Oh and we were gosh. like, oh, gracious. Where are the rest of them? Because it's usually not two. It's usually 22. It is usually 22. <laughs> they have a lot. And it blows my mind how small a female mallard is, how she can keep All 22 those eggs, eggs when, warm. When you go by them, they go... <sighs> <laughs> I mean, they mean business. And get bigger and they bigger and bigger. Up. And they you just want to laugh at them because they're so little. Like, what can they do? That's but right. And then they'll defending. try to bite you and it mm. doesn't hurt. <laughs> they're defending But if a brood. bigger duck bites you, oh, it doesn't feel good. What about a goose? Oh, it like bruises instantly. A it's, goose bite is not it's like fun. A, it's like a nugget bite. Yeah. <laughs> Except the goose don't let go. And, and the goose has teeth. Yeah. Yes, the goose, goose latches teeth on. on their tongue. Yes. I think I took a picture of You some, did. We did. Yeah, you'll have to post I th- it. I, I do. I will post it. I do have one that's older, maybe a couple years ago cantaloupe. on Instagram. I took it's one. But you got a new one. Yes. We'll try to post that this week. Sim. We'll post that this week. And, and you can they see it. mainly hiss and bite mm-hmm. only in breeding season, which is normally February and for some reason, they started in about hmm. December, late December. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've been And going it'll out. probably go to July. Yeah, I think that's right. Probably so. And it's usually the males only. And some people yeah. get the get the idea that geese are just mean. They're they're not mean. They're protecting their brood. Mm-hmm. If you get away from the females and you get away from their nest area, you're not going to have a problem. There, the, I mean, every now and then we'll have one that comes at us if. They feel threatened. Yeah. But for the most part, they're just there to run you off. And they, and, yeah. they, and, they, and they're mate for life. Yes, they do. They're, and cantaloupe and sour cream and onion are, they are inseparable. Yeah. They, so they're, I they're, can't they're, say it. Yeah. They're, um, they love each other. But Big C and Sim Sim ha- share Pringles. Yep. Yeah. Pringles will be with Big C half the time and Sim Sim the other half. Right. And then Lemon Juice, she's kind of a loner. Yeah, she's actually sitting on a few eggs. The, you know, Meatball never never had a no, husband. No, she didn't. No, she didn't. But let me tell y'all something. I went to gather my goose eggs in the trough the mm-hmm. other day, and lemon juice was there. And mm-hmm. I was like, okay, I'll just come back later because she's laying. Mm-hmm. And I went back later, and lemon juice was there. And I was like, okay, I'll just come back later. Lemon juice was there. Guess what? Lemon juice is still there. So she's, she's sitting. sitting. She is sitting on eggs. How do you know it's for? You saw her when yeah, she got I'm, uh, moved her back a little bit and put another four. one up under. So she's got five now? Four. Four. Oh, four eggs. Pringles so, uh, had laid one in a little nest where a duck had been Oh, laying. that's right. Pringles has got her yeah. own little nest now because Lemon Juice has got the trough all <laughs> occupied to herself. And she is not going to let anybody share she's it She's not going to get anybody, yeah. She so, could just snuggle up next to her. <laughs> and then um, Lemon Juice would probably just roll her back up under. I don't know if y'all would. remember last year, Lemon Juice was broody. And I'm sure it was in some videos. I can't remember. But she had so many eggs. I counted yeah. it. It was 46. That they rotted. And yep. she never hatched she never one. Hatched any and I felt so sorry for her because she wouldn't get up. Well, we didn't want to take the chance of grabbing eggs out from under to see which ones were fertile and not. So we just let her sit, and she finally gave up. But, y'all, it was the stinkingest, nastiest mm. mess you have ever smelt. So hopefully this year she won't get too many up under. 
because nobody's laying there. Yeah, the only thing that's happening is Mary Carl and I have put a couple added, set it in the trough, and then she'll grab it and roll it up under. It's so (laughs) funny to watch them do that. Chickens do it. They all do it. It's so cool. Yes, and she acts like she acts like initially I'm not interested, and then (laughs) my chicken Astrid when she gets broody. It is so funny. I'll set an egg in front of her, and she stares at it for about five minutes. She don't want you to think and she's And I'll watch her, it. and then she rolls it up under, and oh. she does it really slow and careful. <laughs> they mean business they when it comes to business. that egg Yes, laying. they do. And when um, they're laying, they even do it. Yeah. Um. And talking about the chickens, I've had a lot of people say, would I please put the picture of the animals we're talking about during the podcast and uh, so we may work on that. Oh, Mary that'd Carl. be a good thing for me, we'll, Carl. We'll take pictures of oh, all yeah. the ones we talk about all the time. And you could like put it to the side. A just little when we're talking, it. and then we can just put the picture up while we're talking, so people will know. I have a picture of Astrid rolling the egg up under. Do you? Is uh-huh. it a picture or a? It's a picture. Okay, we'll we'll, we'll figure it out. But yeah, might not be on this one. Yeah, it may not be on this one, but um, we'll we'll start trying to add those. I bet we can add a picture of my big O on there. <laughs> Everybody won't see her. Everybody won't see her. Of uh, getting back to the mallards leaving, and th- this question popped up a lot too. And it wasn't just the mallards. It was like, how does why does peaches not run off? Why do, are we afraid that nuggets going to run off? How do why don't any of our animals run off? Do we have a fenced in area? We don't have a fenced in area. Mm-mm. They just don't go. They love it here. They do. <laughs> um, one day it was recently. Mary Carl and I were outside and. Nugget always stays right up next to the house, and we looked, and he was kind of in the woods, and we were like, <laughs> Nugget's in the woods. You know, it was mm-hmm. just kind of alarming because Nugget's in the woods. Yeah. He was probably about 20 feet into the woods, and it was like he looked around. He was like, uh-oh, where am I? <laughs> and here he came running out of the woods. <laughs> so, I mean, that was kind of an odd situation that we saw him in the woods because it's something he never does yeah he doesn't go very far and i think it's just that they go to their routine places yep. and that's what they do i mean we cover the same ground when we're outside right i guess i mean so i guess it's kind of their territory kind of their territory the, another question that kind of goes with the ducks animals leaving is where do our ducks sleep <laughs> our ducks just sleep in the middle of the road <laughs> Well, they sleep on the ground. Yeah, just on the ground. I just think wherever they land. Because domesticated ducks can't fly, so they don't roost like a chicken does. So they've just, they've gotten where they, a lot of them stay in the goat pen. Yeah, they do. Um, and that's the mallards. The mallards. And muscovies are what you call a perching duck, which means they will roost or get on top of things. Mm-hmm. They'll get on branches. They want to be up high. And they normally sleep on top of the barn or the chicken coop. With Scott and, and Ozella <laughs> and Little O. and mm-hmm. Mallards are not perching ducks, which means they are ground sleepers. and mm-hmm. Or they sometimes sleep in the water. But and they, I've caught a few on the top of the chicken coop. And yeah. I hope I, they aren't making nests up there. I hope they're not making nests up there, too. <laughs> I, I don't know how the chicks would get down. Oh, that would be very weird. You talking yeah. about a mallard? Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we've seen videos of wood ducks before. Yeah, but they land on leaves. Yeah, when they're in the tip top of the tree, in the tree cavity. Uh Uh-oh, excuse me. Sorry about that. In the tip top of trees, Mm -hmm. and then they, they're... They get the instinct that it's time to leave the nest, and they just jump out. And it could be 40 foot in a tree, and they land on a pile of leaves, and then they just get up and keep going. Yep. (laughs) So our mallards don't sleep. Like that. And no. our mallards, when they nest, we have found that they nest on the ground. So yeah. that answers that. That answers that. What else? Um, what do we do with all our empty feed bags? And I think people had the assumption that our feed bags are those really nice yeah, canvas style, but they're paper. They're our paper. feed bags are completely They're not recyclable. Paper. I mean, they're, you know. They're I kind get, of like biodegradable. Yeah, they're just, they're like Brown paper bags. Hey, you could store garlic in it, you but it would store smell garlic like in. feed. It <laughs> would smell like feed. A lot like feed. It would, but it, uh, ours are double line. So I'm wondering if you could take that top liner out. I don't know. Out. I well, don't that's know. okay. I got plenty of brown bags, but it might be a tip for somebody. Yeah. Huh. So they're but, they're not good for... Yeah, you can't cut them out and make stockings no, so out of them I've or bags some, or any of that kind of good stuff. I've them. had some emails in the past asking, could you send me some of your old bags? It's not anything that would last. It's I not. Mean, it wouldn't last through one season because it's just a 
it's, it's just paper. paper. Yeah, yeah, if it gets wet, it's it's a, it's it's a goner. Absolutely goner. Like if it gets wet, it gets a hole in it. Yeah, it's 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 bad. And I found that every time I go to fill up the feed barrels and I carry. We use Tucker milling. Mm -hmm. uh, I carry the feed bags, and I have a tendency to put it up against me when I'm carrying it. I guess it just leverages mm -hmm. me better. But I look down at my shirt, and no matter what color shirt I've got on, like if it's a ye uh, yellow bag as our layer pellets, mm -hmm. my shirt will be yellow. Yep. From really? the from writing the mm -hmm. on the on huh. the bag. Yep. So I always make sure I've got a not so good shirt on. I wouldn't wear my Adler Farm shirt to, <laughs> to um, <laughs> unload any feed. I don't want a yellow Adler Farm shirt. I want a red. That's one, right. So. Um, somebody wanted to know about your Weight Watchers. Okay, what they want to know. They said, how long were you on Weight Watchers before you started seeing a significant amount of weight loss? And did you eat their food or did you eat regular stuff? Well, when I started, I did not feel good. And you did not for about two weeks. And I thought that I had to just go from eating whatever I wanted to, to being very, very careful and very strict and really take it all in and... I wouldn't get enough calories was yeah. the bottom line. Mm -hmm. I felt terrible. At the end of the day, I didn't feel like doing anything. And I, I just, I just wasn't worth the flip. Right. Finally, I figured out I wasn't getting enough calories and I wasn't losing any weight either. Mm -mm. Just because I had limited my calories to a small amount didn't mean I was losing weight. So what happened was I adjusted that to where I was getting the, I was using all my points. The yep. point system I was on, I got 30 points. And so I started using maybe 25 points. In the beginning, I was trying to only use like 10 and or 15. And you used the app. That's how you knew what kind of I points used was the app. app. And, um, and I, I did not use their food. I never bought any food by Weight Watchers. Um, not saying it wouldn't help. I don't know. But I just um, kind of limited my calories. Now, I would, in, in the grocery store or whatever, if I didn't know what something was point-wise... I could scan it. It's got a little thing where you can mm -hmm. scan the barcode on the back of the food and you could see how many points that particular food had. And that helped me a lot. And basically it trained me to realize what I could eat and what I shouldn't eat. Right. Because that was my biggest thing is I would just, I didn't know what I could eat. I was, Mary Carl was in school and I'd grab a peanut butter sandwich and think I was doing good. And lo and behold, peanut butter has a lot of calories in it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't burning off all that peanut butter right. at the end of the day. So, I did start to lose weight, but it was probably about a month and a half in. Before you really started seeing. Before I really started seeing it. And I got stuck at, I think it was about 140 pounds. Mm -hmm. And it was months. I thought that was my plateau. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't, I didn't have a weight set in mind. Right. But it was kind of discouraging to know I was eating correct every day, but I wasn't losing a pound. Right. So I just felt like I'd met my plateau and I'd continue to eat healthy. And then all of a sudden I started dropping again. Yep. And I don't know what I don't know why. I'm not a weight coach. I, I can't answer that. But I can tell you that I still eat the same thing. I still I don't have the app anymore. I started it in April of last year, so I'm almost a year. Almost a year. Almost a year. But I am never going back to where I was. Right. I'm just, I was so uncomfortable with, in my clothes and the way I looked. And, you know, I don't wear makeup. I'm not a fancy person. Mm -hmm. But I just, I just didn't like the way I looked. Right. I didn't want to, you know, try on a pair of pants. We got to have clothes. We got to, we can't go around naked. So. Right. It was just the fact that I was unhappy with the way I looked. Peaches can go around naked. She can. Yeah. I'm going to reset the camera. All right, Mary Carl. What kind of chicken is corny? Boy, he has, <laughs> I'm talking about, he is caught, he is almost just shut the internet down. I think we maybe should make a corny shirt. <laughs> <laughs> maybe hey, so. Hey, that'd be a good idea. He is a cream leg bar. Crested cream leg bar. Yes, and I really don't know if there's a non-crested cream leg bar. I don't bar. think there is. I think they're all crested. Yeah, and we have a hen for him, and that's Vicky. Mm -hmm. And she's beautiful, too. She is beautiful. But you really wouldn't think that would be a pair. They don't really look identical. Most chickens will look similar as a male and a female, but... Cream leg bars aren't really one. <laughs> well, to me, when I sit back and I look at them, I do see a resemblance. Yeah, but it's not like uh, blue silky with another blue silky. No. <laughs> well, you know the one to me that's 
completely total opposites are your, your Old English duck wings. Oh, oh yeah. yes. And those things. Cloverleaf so. is an Old English. And he's black and white. Yeah, he's black and white. And then Belle is a duck wing color. She's just a little mix. And, and But she's, she's a duck wing color. And, and she's great. Yeah, I that's mean, what the totally hand looks different. like. <laughs> they look totally different. Totally different. I always think of Cloverleaf as being green. green. Y'all call it black? It's black. <laughs> he looks green to me. I've always thought he was green. Maybe I'm not doing too we well. We might have to have a, some eyes examination. Something. Maybe I get an eye doctor th- come When y'all said black, heel. I was like, that boy is green. <laughs> Cloverleaf. Cloverleaf I mean, he reminds- is like mallard green. It was so funny. And I, I, I did a picture of it a long time ago when we had it. We had three of them. Three, three, three yeah. of those, yes. and they reminded me. I don't know if you guys remember that movie, The Three Amigos, because that's what they look like. <laughs> you had a the, picture I of did, all three. I of had them. a picture of side by side the three, the chickens, and the Three Amigos. The movie, and it's hilarious. I mean, uh, it's um. <laughs> well, you can tell people you're gonna find it, but you're not gonna find I it. I won't find it. Y'all, y'all go on our Instagram account. That'd be the best place to look. Like all the pictures. <laughs> And share all the pictures, right. and mm-hmm. then you'll find the three amigos That's eventually. Right. Yeah, I can remember. Were they all roosters? They were all yeah. three roosters. Were, oh, yeah. They were all little ducklings. Mm-hmm. And some of them were a little crazier than other ones. I, and it that's was how Cloverleaf I just, with one of them, wasn't he? No, he, he was. A, he's a baby, kind of. Okay. He's not old at all. Think, he's I, like a year. I think they were mean. Well, oh, yeah. I, I remember <laughs> just saying, there goes that craziest of the three, and there yeah. goes crazier, and... <laughs> They were they were a little bizarre. The three amigos. <laughs> but that just goes to show you that their all their personalities are not the same because he's as gentle as he can he's be. He's super sweet. He didn't want to be hailed. And they but, sound yeah. different. All chickens sound different. They in do my all opinion. sound different. Yeah, yeah, they all got their own type of voice. There's this bell sounds like. Bell's mama is high pitched. Mm. Yes, she is. And she's like crazy. Loud. And she is yeah. crazy. <laughs> but Belle, she's a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. Make she Carl knows to not tell held. me to catch catch um duchess that's bill's mom yeah and we used to think they were called dutch bantams and that's why her name's duchess <laughs> mm-hmm. what else we got um talking about the sheriff and we he ain't called the sheriff for nothing <laughs> does nugget the emu protect our chickens and ducks from predators and that would be a yes <laughs> but to some degree to some degree i'm sure if something was big enough I don't know about that because I'll share a little story with you. But but I know, for example, he knows when something's different. Oh, gosh. Yes, he does. We I have mean, all those chickens, yeah. right? And if we introduce a new one into the flock, Nugget knows it immediately he and have will to go check it after out. that. And I, I don't, don't say it's malice involved, but he goes and he does inspect that chicken. It's almost like he very, has got very, to see it. Yes. And and the chicken will get nervous, start running, and the nugget starts running oh, after yeah. it. And then it becomes like a crazy <laughs> Mario Kart road race in the chicken pen. But <laughs> but Nugget is very, very observant and he knows when things are different automatically. And I do think that if a possum or raccoon came in there, he would go after him. Oh, he! I think he would. He tries to bite the dogs. <laughs> yeah, he does. He's just not <clears throat> familiar gets, with the dogs. Then he gets a little scared, and he does that little sissy that little, leap. He does that little dance. That little hiss he in does the all air. His and <laughs> By the and way, squats down. Guess what's fixing to happen? <laughs> what? Butterflies are here. Oh gosh! Oh, I took a bunch of pictures of a butterfly and. He was in the pen at the moment, and uh-huh. he was just like, oh, my gosh, there's a butterfly. Yeah, uh, He just freaks out when it comes to butterflies. <laughs> when, he was, when he was younger, he was really freaked out about butterflies. Oh, he, he ate start, a bee. He started hissing. He had a bee today? Yes. Oh, yesterday, wow. there was a bee just hovering, one of those big old carpenter bees. Oh, God. And it, he just swallowed it whole. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, well. Nugget. The sheriff. Well, back to my... my what was your um, story? Well, it's not really a story. Oh. I... Mary Carl and I were in the car when oh, Jason was with us. You went to shut something, the barn door, uh-huh. and she asked me to shut the um, the ducks in the brooder. So I went in the coop, and I, I was kind of leery because I didn't know where Nugget was. And I went in the coop, and I shut the duck door, and I turned around, and he was asleep in front of the 
the um, chicken coop door and that's never moved. That's where he sleeps. He never moved. Really? Well, that's funny because somebody asked me, that was going to be the next question, does Nugget turn into a zombie at night? And I was going to say no. He's usually up and wandering he around. He did not come to me. And I didn't shut the gate. And I thought, oh, goodness, if this crazy character gets out at night, <laughs> we're really going to have trouble. Yeah. But um, I didn't shut the gate. And I walked and I shut the brooder and I came back by him. And he was he lays down on his arms. And yeah. they kind of go the wrong direction. Yeah, it, does, it looks weird. <laughs> it's like, just an emu. Yeah. It's nothing wrong with him. It's just the way that they lay. And he was laying down. And he never batted an eye, never looked at me. And I thought, whew. If he'd have got out, we'd have been chasing that boy for... Well, I've never seen him do that, because I was going to say Nugget is not a zombie, because usually when we go down there at night, he's walking around. He wasn't. Yeah, he, he normally is, and he's just like, maybe. Hey. Maybe yeah. it was a rough day. Maybe it was a rough day. Maybe Peaches worked him too hard. I bet so. There's That's an emu that lives down the road from us. He's like a mile. Well, uh-huh. Probably not even a mile. But he, when I was little, probably four or so, he would always sit on his knees like that yeah instead of like we do he does it they like go the opposite, opposite way yeah and i always wanted an emu but i didn't know they did that <laughs> it's really weird it's weird i can remember pulling up in there coming home from school with mary carl and parking and us you know if he was close to the fence and us looking at him and just her dreaming of having an emu one day she wanted emu and the only reason we did not get an emu was because of me and old dad I was, I, I was, I didn't get us the emu. I mean, I was scared that because, you know, we've been told they got to have like a six or eight foot fence. Well, we had a friend that got a pair of them and that was kind of the convincing, I think, to it you was. that they were gentle. They and, were gentle. And they had two of them. And a yep. lot of people have asked us if we plan to get a mate for, for Nugget. And our reasoning for not having a mate is they can sometimes become aggressive. Yes, Hormones and, kick in you know, because there's a mate. I Just kinda, like the geese. I may be wrong on this, but I kind of feel like if they're brought up together, then that's not an issue. You may be right. Because the ones that Julie and Dave had, they were brought up together yep. and they were, you know, they, they were they always were, fine. Always fine. So I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. But right now, we're Nugget's going to be the sheriff. We just don't want to take a chance of changing yeah. his personality. Because he's so to, sweet. And then we would have to worry about. How are we going to rehome the emu? We're attached to it. And yes. then we don't know if he's attached to it, but he's overprotected. Right. So, yeah. Uh, the next question is, I just got some new chicks. That's what it says. <laughs> and I'm looking at a paper. But it says that I got chick started that was unmedicated. Is unmedicated okay? Unmedicated is just fine for chicks. It's really just unmedicated. It doesn't have medication in it. And what is the medication? It's... I really don't know what it is. It's for but coxidia. I mean, what's it for? It, it's for coccidia. It's for coccidia. Yeah, and it just protects them against that. And we have never had a problem with that. And we've always used medicated chick starter. Yes. And yeah. ducks, they don't get coccidia. And so you use unmedi- unmedicated chick starter. And for some reason, the medicated has something in it that doesn't agree, agree with, with it. Al- Albium or something. Something with an A. <laughs> I don't. It, it won't. It won't kill. Kill them, but it just it may make them sick. So we if do it use medicated. Have that in there, that's fine. Yeah, we do use medicated for our chicks because of coccidia, and coccidia will. If, if um, coccidia is everywhere. It, it, it lives in the soil. It's everywhere. Um, you may never get it. You may have an outbreak. If you do get an outbreak, um, it's fast. It's fast. It, it'll it kill is. them overnight. It, 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 it will. Um, so that's why we use medicated chick starter. I advise anybody that is starting chicks to buy medicated chick starter. Yeah. That's just does, especially newcomers that are and rookies organic. and all that. I would, I would definitely do the medicated because that's the worst thing for a new chick owner that's never had chickens before. Something happened to them, so. The organic feed is non-medicated. Even if it doesn't say non-medicated, organic chick starter is not medicated. Right. And by the time, if you're worried about whatever chemical that is. By the time they're yeah, laying. It's by the time be... they're laying, you switch feeds by then. Yeah. So you're not you're not going to have the medicated in the feed. Then. So if you want to use a non-GMO or 
organic feed do it once they're laying egg right. age, which is usually around five months. That's a typical yeah. right. laying age. Now, give or take, it may be four months, it may be six, it may be seven, but five months is a general rule of thumb for right. swapping to a laying pellet anyway. And, and that's what we do. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a million ways to do things, but that's what works for us that we found, and that's just what we do, and that's the advice we give. Oh. Um, I was going to, uh, Mary Carl, What's, is there a certain breed of ducks that are cleaner than other ducks and that are less maintenance? No. No. <laughs> but if you want a little something that's a little better than a shavings, any sort of bedding for ducklings, a GQF brooder is awesome. <laughs> they, I mean, the you know water what? might spill a little bit, uh-huh. but it's not going to get all over them and make them stinking. <laughs> yeah, if you've got to clean it out, if you're the if you're the caretaker of the ducks, then you want the GQF. If you got somebody clean it out for you, you don't care what they go in. Well, I was <laughs> I was thinking she was gonna say, you know, well, if you if you wanted a duck and didn't want a big mess, then go with call ducks. Yeah, they because they're the like messiest. bantam ducks because well, they're little. smaller. They're so small. They're tiny. Yes, they are teensy. Let's they are. They they are very. They're very small. only. I've measured one with a q-tip and it's only as long as a q-tip yeah but that doesn't mean they're not messy it's they're just still a mess messy. of yes but they're not they're not if if i had my choice and y'all know how particular i am about ducks mm. because they are so messy hey do you know there's some in her room right now yes um <laughs> i can i can smell them oh goodness <laughs> And they're in the GQF. <laughs> no, I'm yeah. just kidding. I can't smell them. But if before the GQF, you could smell them. Um, and they're sold out everywhere. They are sold out. We were going to add some more, but more levels to ours, and we oh, can't. She get told them me right today now. that she thought she needed a grow out pen. She said, "You know what that means, Mama? There's going to be more chicks in the house." Oh gosh, <laughs> that means older chicks too. Um, but the uh, the Muscovy would be my choice. Yeah. After once they're grown, they're still going to be messy when they're young. But to me, Muscovies are cleaner. Um, they're not near as loud. Well, oh, Mary Carol, they are like silent. They go. <laughs> yeah, they don't quack. And they kind of don't want to be social with you. They're either. not. And the only thing about Muscovies, though, is, is though they can produce the babies. <laughs> But they're so cute. They are cute when they're, they're little. They're neon yellow mm. and they're, they have little pink beaks. <laughs> Mary Carl developed something that has helped with baby ducks. And we'll bring that on the next oh, podcast. We yeah. won't talk about it tonight. But um, we will show that little thing that you made that does help. Yes. And, um, and I'll make sure that I set that inside okay. so we can show it. We'll do that. Uh, actually, I'll bring it in this room so we won't forget. Is kind of nasty right now. <laughs> no, it's not. I cleaned it. Oh, oh, you did. I did. Um, several people. I say several people. A few people, not several. Um, asked about JP, and we mentioned it a while back in a video. We didn't make a huge deal about it, but we did mention it in a video. But JP did pass away. Um, just one of those random things. You know, if if you Polishes own are unhealthy. Well, if you own chickens. Um, and it's funny, me and Chad even talked about this last night. If you own chickens, you can go down there and gather eggs from them. And then the next morning, go down there and one of them just have passed away and you don't have any reason why. And you've done everything right. So, yeah, if um, you, if you want to <laughs> become familiar with death and heartbreak, then chickens are going to affect you. Chickens are going to affect you. But um, you just, you, you just, you, you just do the know. best you can. You know, we have some that may live... 10 or 12 years, and we have some that just randomly just, you don't know what's up. And chicks, it's the same. Yeah, it's chicks are the really same. It's really weird with chicks because it'll be running around mm-hmm. in your lap. It'll be pecking little pieces of food, and it'll be just just as fine as anything. And then you'll come back in an hour. Yeah. And be dead. Yeah. I or can't. it be on its deathbed, and you know it's not going to yeah. make it. So so don't beat yourself up. I know that's easy to do, especially if you're a new well, chicken owner. Well, it's hard to tell somebody that, too, yeah. because being attached to anything is it just is. nature. Yeah. And th- we don't have chicken vets like a dime a dozen no. like we do for dogs and cats. And when Penny was here, we took Penny to a to an animal veterinarian that was more familiar with birds and chickens that's than right. most. But he still didn't offer us anything we weren't already mm-hmm. aware of. So, so, you know, as far as treatment, you just kind of have to Google and develop your own, you know, 
system for treating. That's right. We try to keep a variety of medications on hand so we can treat what we think is wrong mm-hmm. with it. But you don't know the diagnosis and a lot of and times. And then, you, like I said, you'll have the instance where there's no signs that you pick up whatsoever. It looks completely healthy. And the next day you go down there and it's and it's gone. Right. So just um, as a new chicken owner, you know, things may like that happen. And so, you know, it happens to all of us. It's not that but you're doing anything wrong. Ducks, it's literally the total opposite. Yeah, if you got 10 hardy. ducks, you would probably end up with 10. Yeah. They're very yes. hardy. They're very hardy. Even when they come in at the um, feed store, you know, you might they might have a box of chicks, a box of 50, and only 20 of them be alive. And they might yeah. have a box of 50 ducks and all 50 of them be alive and right. it's just the nature of the beast it i mean is. they're hardier animals than they chickens. are they're very hardy i have this one little duck that hatched recently and it has an underbite it's weird and i've had that happen before and i don't know why it's like well like jet he was missing his bottom beak <laughs> yeah jet. a question about silkies um oh, is that I, silky? yeah where do I get my silky information? I kind of just get it from everywhere. <laughs> yeah. There's not really a silky book. I don't yeah, have no a silky book. She Googles a lot. Well, yeah, it, it, it's, it's like whatever. It's kind of... Whatever you're you encountering a, at yeah. that time. Yeah, I'm like... I had this one, I, a picture of one I had today, and there's this really cool color called a silver partridge. We might try to add a picture of that one. Maybe not tonight. Yeah, but... <laughs> it's, it's a rough night. <laughs> it's late. <laughs> but we'll get on that. <clears throat> That'll be your job. You'll start coming up with the pictures prior. Yeah. And Daddy can add them that to That would the... help Daddy out tremendously if you did that. But there's this one silky I have, and I love a silver partridge silky. I have not ever had one. How about this? You and... explain them what a silver partridge silky looks like. Okay, it's white with gray. It's white, mainly white with little gray spots. But the gray's on its neck, though, right? Neck, its neck and yeah. tail okay. and head. It's beautiful. It's pretty. And so I was looking at my silkies, and I have these two younger ones. I have a little silver burton, which is black, with a solid black one with little white neck. And I was looking at them, and I said, that looks like a silver partridge. So I took a picture of that one, and I was comparing it to it, and yes, it's a silver partridge, and I have no clue how I got it. Well, that's what you were Googling before we came yeah. up here, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. So <laughs> she, just, she just, you know, finds whatever she needs to know at that time and researches that particular question. Yep. So it's no go-to that's for, right. for her knowledge. It's just random. So, yeah, a lot of Googling. And that stories guide, what's it called? Poultry Stor- Guide. Stor- S- Stories Guide to Poultry. I think that's, that's an it. awesome book, too. Oh, it is, and we'll, it's really nice. We'll try to put a link to that book down below in the it description. It kind of got us going, I would say. and That, um, the Livestock Conservancy website that has the Heritage Breed Chickens on it is another good good resource. But uh, I don't have anything about silkies. Well, there's unlimited information on the web, that's it for is. sure. Um, a friend of mine was telling me that you use coffee grounds and leftover coffee in your garden. Is that true? Yes, you can. Um, it's, uh, it's great for your garden. Um, it's not going to be something instant or anything like that, but it will help build your soil. But like anything else, um, I don't know how big this person's garden is. If it was a small raised bed garden or something like that, I would be careful as to how much I put in there. But if you had a larger garden, it really wouldn't matter because that would take a lot of coffee to to, to 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 actually hurt anything. But coffee grounds are great for your garden. And then I asked somebody else asked me about eggshells in the garden. Um, and there may be somebody, some people, they're going to disagree with, with me on this, but I've done a lot of research on this one before. The eggshells in the garden is pretty much a myth. Um, eggshells are not going to add calcium to your garden like you think it is. is. It takes years upon years upon years for an eggshell to break down into the form of the calcium that your plants could intake. So eggshells in your garden, um, it's not going to hurt anything per se. Um, it may, if you're a big earthworm person, earthworms hate eggshells because if they go up against them, it, it could might, damage them. Yeah, it might cut um, them. Yeah. So, so don't, we try you, to stay away from that in you our don't, worm yeah, bin. You don't want to put eggshells in your worm bin. So... The eggshell thing in your garden really, really is not hurting anything, but really it's not really doing anything for your garden either. 
like you think it is. Now, 15, 20 years from now, when those eggshells maybe have broken down somewhat, <laughs> it may add some calcium to your garden. But that's just a garden myth that's just kind of ran over the years on the internet, and people I, have shared it I'm so many times. I'm kind of looking out for my my plants for this season. I don't really want to know what my plants are going right. to look like in the year 2040. That's right. So eggshells. I don't. We we used to put eggshells in our compost bin, and you could you could turn it and in a we we had compost piles that were over you know, a couple of years old and the eggshells are still there. So yeah. they don't you? break down. And it takes them a long, long, long time. Somebody sent us an email this week and it was something about um, <clears throat> eggshells to prevent blossom rot. That's that's because ca- lack of calcium causes blossom. So what, rot. what can they add that's you calcium? You can just get calcium. Um, Hall sells that? Hall sells it. Um, so go on and get it right yeah, now. You would get it right then but and it'll be instant. You can refeed the eggshells to your chickens. You can refeed the eggshells it, to your chickens. That actually adds calcium to their eggshells Correct. after they eat it. And you no, know, it doesn't take 20 years for it to break down. The no. chicken probably wouldn't still be alive in 20 years. Right. Well, that's like <clears throat> us eating an egg and consuming the calcium. That would be instant. But, yeah. you know, to, for a plant, for the eggshell to have to break down to produce the calcium, so micro, you have to imagine yeah, that's not going to happen in a... You because know. you think about the roots, and you're talking about on a microbial level of it breaking down to that minute. So it, it's just, it'll take a while. And I just don't want people to be wasting a lot of time thinking they're doing something good for well, their garden, thinking that this may help blossom in rot, and it doesn't. So. My suggestion would be to go ahead and buy the calcium now. Yeah. And have it on hand. Mm-hmm. And if you see that you're having an issue and you need some calcium, apply the that's calcium right. instead of waiting on eggshells. So and that's that's what I would do. Speaking of eggshells, what is our favorite egg color? Eggshell color. <laughs> What's yours? Oh, goodness. I guess the, the dark, dark brown. I well, thought you I said blue. I did. Okay, blue. Blue. <laughs> I would probably have to say olive. Well, I, you don't even have an olive egger, except yeah, for do. Wilhelmina. Yes, we, do. Oh, we got that new one. Oh, I we don't, don't know, know who it comes from. She's a mystery. Is and olive speaking egg. <laughs> of olive eggers, I'm thinking about maybe trying to create my own with corny. Corny is a cream leg bar, and cream leg bars lay blue eggs. A beautiful blue egg. So if you breed a brown egg layer, like a pendant sinker or a maron, to a blue egg layer, egg layer like a cream leg bar or americana you could get an olive egger a really pretty olive egger yes mm-hmm. because the the darker the egg the darker the olive so mm-hmm. she's gonna she's thinking about adding a few hens to vicky and okay. corny and that way she could get multiple eggs instead of just vicky's egg well my yeah. favorite is the the dark dark brown ones the chocolate eggs those are my favorite and uh, you know what Sinkas. our cartons of eggs this year have oh, been gosh, prettier been than beautiful. they've ever been I st- it was our, our dear friend Scott Peacock got some today, and I was just so excited to, for him to. Even what did see he say him. when he saw them? He was he was he was flabbergasted. They was were he giddy? He was giddy. They are beautiful. They this are. Year. They are they beautiful really mix. Are. We've got a lot of different colors, and I like to see that. You know, I don't want to sell a carton of eggs. It's all the same color. Yes, they're just gorgeous, and right they don't now. taste any different. They by don't the taste way. any different. The yolks are still yellow, so they're they're all the same on I the was, inside, but they are beautiful on the outside. I was saying earlier today that I saw a picture of a flock of chickens that were all lavender, black, and white, or blue, lavender, black, uh, white, and blue, something like that. And I mean, I love those colors of chickens, but I don't like a flock of just red the same. chickens. She yeah. wants a variety. I, it, it's just really strange right. to me. But I just love to have all these different colors, partridge, blue, all all different colors, and silkies too. I really don't like to put them together as just having white, just having partridge. Well, that's just, just your personal opinion. Though. Yeah, I like to have um, my silkies all as a mixture of, uh, you could get a buff, you could get a little apricot, which is kind of, I call it apricot, it's like a light buff. A silver partridge, which I was talking about earlier, and I don't know how I, I got think it. you just want to see what color you can come up with. Yeah, so too. I just like the weird colors. Speaking of coffee grounds, I just thought of something. Mm-hmm. We have a little local 
coffee shop, as probably every town does. Um, I know you have your Starbucks, Starbucks which is your big chain. They'll do it too. They give away mm -hmm. their coffee grounds. And what we used to do is drop off a five gallon bucket at our local coffee store, and they're going to throw those coffee grounds somewhere. So right. it was no more trouble for them to dump those coffee grounds in that five gallon bucket and me come back and give them another bucket mm -hmm. and take that one. So if, you, if you're interested in collecting coffee grounds, that's a good way to do it. Yep. And Starbucks will do that too, but I think now that's caught on with the Starbucks. It's first come, so, first serve. Yeah, first so come, first serve. But you might have a local coffee shop that's, that, right. that's not giving them away, and they would be thrilled to, you know, eliminate that waste. That's right. A question so. I had for me is, can you name a chicken Mary Carl? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yep. Somebody asked that today. Could they name their hen Mary Carl? I don't care. Name it Mary Carl. Oh, I just thought of something. Somebody okay. wants to know what these rings are that we wear, Jason and I. I wore um, a traditional wet wedding ring and band for years i lost the diamond of it a couple of times the setting broke um i'm always using my hand so i found these i don't even know what brand it is i don't know what brand they are either just bought it oh, cheap. i think it says well his is like it's wore down you can't see it but regardless they're just little rubber rings that keep they're our silicone yeah, yeah keep our hands safe and, and i almost did that thing one time where you know you you grab something and your ring catches and it keeps going, and I, it almost happened to me, and it, it's, it's bad because it, I just think of a banana, and it won't happen with this. <laughs> it won't happen with this this ring here. So. Except Nugget can grab onto it and pull it like Tries a rubber to. band. Oh, I'm going to tell you, they're very <laughs> tough because mine will stretch when Nugget bites it, and it goes right back. Now, <laughs> It'll one be day, like this long. Mm -hmm. One day it's going to break. It's going to break. It sure is better than him swallowing a diamond. <laughs> <laughs> I He'd think probably that's about, poop it out eventually. I think that's about all we have time for. Uh, you think? I think so. Okay. Well, I had, I had, I had one I mean, that I want. If you want to reset the camera, that's fine. No, I had one that I really wanted. To, it's um, who's the person that does our intro? And we did mention it when it first came out, but it is a DJ in the Birmingham, Alabama area. His name is Big Dave Richardson. He's a super fan of our channel and what we do here. And he reached out to me and said, "I would love to do the intro." to y'all's podcast and i and love it it's so awesome i love it I, I i i smile every time i edit the video and i hear him at the beginning well, somebody <laughs> wanted to know how we f how to find the podcast and so i sent him a link and when i sent him a link it started playing that awesome voice of his <laughs> and i just grinned you know here i was sitting there by myself just grinning so. if, if anybody wants to know how there's the podcast is everywhere if you just want to listen to it. All you got to do is just it. Google it, Cog Hill Podcast. That's and what it comes I did. Up. It's, uh, it's on iTunes, on Apple. It's on even on, we say the A because she's right behind us, but it's on Alexa. Um, it's it's uh, it's on Google Play. It's on Stitcher. But here's it's the on deal. Pandora. You don't have to do all that. It's all you got to do is Google Cog Hill Farm it Podcast. It does, but if people it, have an app or on their radio yeah, on their car. But, you know, a lot of yeah, older people just that's don't true. realize that and all you got to do is Google Cog Hill Farm Podcast. Yeah. That's what I did because I'm computer stupid. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll come up. And if I can it, find it, everywhere. anybody can find it. Um, I, uh, uh, there's, it's, it's everywhere. Trust me. It's, you can it's find all it. over the place. You can find it. Yeah. Because it's syndicated. It's kind of different than the YouTube channel. Yep. Well, all right then. Well, that looks like another episode of the Cogcast Podcast. And we were talking about it was going to be short and sweet and I it was know, long and it was long. Long winded. <laughs> As always. That's okay. We're getting back on a regular schedule. That's right. Hey. Don't take them off yet. It's not time. I was okay. going to tell them, y'all be good. Y'all be good. <laughs> y'all be good. This is Adler Farm, but y'all be good. Uh, you be you. You be you. Check out our shirts. That's right. Y'all be good. Y'all be good.